everyone, in this video, I'm going to show you how to quantify protein on your western blots using ImageJ. Now before jumping into the example, I'm just going to walk you through all the steps you would need to take in order to successfully do so. Let's have a look at this slide over here. Here's just the western blots of my protein of interest under different conditions, so in control, condition 1, condition 2, along with my loading control. Now the steps you need to take in order to quantify your protein of interest and compare it under the different conditions, first is to measure the band intensity, so all these intensities, and then it is to normalize to loading control, so you would normalize the band intensity of your protein of interest against its respective intensity of the loading control in the same experiment, and then it is to normalize to experimental control, so if you're interested in making the comparison of your protein of interest in condition 1 to control, then you would take that normalized data and normalize it against control. So before jumping back into the example, I'd like to explain why we use a loading control. So if you're already familiar with the purpose of using a loading control, go ahead and skip the next part of the video. So let's say you've got two conditions, control and condition one, and you're interested in measuring protein X and seeing how does it change in condition one. So you run a Western blot, and if in condition one, protein X goes down, this is reflected on your Western blot. So the band intensity of the sample from condition one will be a lot lower than the band intensity of samples run from the control. Now say when you come to load your gel, you accidentally load a little bit more of sample 2, which is condition 1, compared to the sample of control. When you come to analyze your western blot, the data will look different. In this case, the band intensity from sample 2 will be higher than the band intensity from sample 1, which is not a true reflection of what is actually taking place. So how do you go about making up for this? And this is the reason why we use a loading control. So a loading control would be a protein you know will not change under the different conditions, and usually what is commonly used is a housekeeping gene like alpha-tubulin or beta-tubulin. So let's go back to look at our western blot. So let's go back to the first example where you say you've loaded the samples equally and is and it is reflective of actually taking place. When you look at their loading control, you see that the band intensity of the protein is the same in the two samples. Whereas in the case where you had loaded more of sample 2, this is also reflected in the loading control where you see that the band intensity in sample 2 is more than the band intensity in sample 1. So what you do next is you normalize this data, you would subtract protein X by the band intensity of loading control, and thus the results will reflect what is actually taking place in the experiment. Now let's go back and see how we can go ahead and quantify this using MHJ. Over here I have my blots for my protein X under three different biological replicates along with my loading control under the three different biological replicates. So we're going to start with protein X, my first biological replicate, and open it with image J. So you can either go file, open, or you can just take that image and drag it into image J. The first thing you would want to do is press on square and then draw a square around those bands. Go to Analyze, Gels, and under Gels, select First Lane. Then you're going to go ahead and plot the intensity data for the three different bands. So go to Analyze, Gels, Plot Lanes. And here you have graph and the area under each graph represents the intensity for each band. Just be mindful when you're looking at the bands, here you have these connected to each other. You want to just take and draw and separate these two graphs because when you come to measure the area under these two graphs, it may give you them as one. So just separate those two graphs. And then in order to measure the area under each graph, which represents the intensity of each band, you would select wand and then just click on the area and a window pops up with that data. You can go ahead and select that data, copy it, and here I've just opened an Excel sheet and you know organized um, what needs to be plotted. So I've got my replicates, 
my protein X, loading control, band intensity, and I'm going to go ahead and plot in that data over here. Um, so just let me cut paste it. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my loading control. So just go ahead and close these up. You don't need to save them. I'm going to open my loading control from the same experiment, drag it into image J. Here you can see that I have some non-specific bands. So when I come to measure my square, just make sure that you're not also drawing around those bands. Go to head, analyze, select first lane, and then again, gels, plot lanes. And here is the intensity data. So again, if these are connected, make sure you separate them so you don't measure them as one. Go to wand, press on each, and you've got the intensity data for each band. Copy it, go to Excel, doo -doo -doo. there you go. And then I'm going to do the same thing for each of my replicate. I'll just quickly fill in that data. Okay, so now that I've got all my data points, let's go ahead and perform our calculations. So like I mentioned earlier, let's just look at this. The next step would be to normalize to loading control. So that's the intensity of your protein's band against the intensity of your loading control's band. It would be this over the intensity of the loading control. Go ahead and then just drag the formula down. Okay, I'm just get rid of those. All right. Third step is to normalize to experimental control. So normalization value of conditioned proteins band against normalization value of experimental controls band. Since we have three biological replicates, what I would do is first I would get the average of the control. So control average, which is equals average. All right, and then I would use this to normalize my data. So here you have it. You can now go ahead and use these values to plot your graph and make those statistical analysis to compare the different conditions against your control.